Hello everyone and welcome to another video. The scenarios with the highest guest calls require you to get up to about a thousand guests per year on average to beat the goal, which is quite a lot. But let's say that you optimized everything as much as possible. What is the maximum number of guests you can get in one single year? To achieve this we need to do two things, maximize the number of new guests that spawn and minimize the number of guests that leave the park. Let's start with the second one. As we saw in a video I made a few weeks ago, you can trap guests in your park with transport rides. If guests encounter a transport ride and are able to enter the queue, they will always enter it. If you reduce the throughput of the ride to zero by abusing the bug that the train will never depart if the minimum waiting time is above 128 seconds, you can trap the guests in the queue line forever. All we need to complete this is a TV on every tile, otherwise the guests would eventually leave the queue. With this finished trap, all the guests that spawn and enter the park will stay in the park. Maximizing the guest spawning is a bit more complicated. There are two components to this, natural guest generation and advertisements. A park where you charge for the entrance has one more campaign available than one where you charge for the ride, so we need to pick a scenario with an entry fee. The build your own Six Flags Park scenario is a nice fit as it charges for the entrance, has a hundred thousand maximum loan and has lots of space. The natural guest generation is influenced by quite a few different things. The ones we need to worry about here are the park rating, the soft guest cap and most importantly the awards. Every positive award you have active increases the natural gas generation by 25% multiplicatively, so we want as many awards as possible. Let's start building the park and I'll talk you through the things that I'm doing to maximize the guest spawning as they happen. The very first thing that we do is pause the game. Time is of the absolute essence here and even though you cannot build when the game is paused, you can select things which saves a lot of time. I can set up the remove scenery and path tool, unpause, click and repause very quickly so that this action has barely taken up any time. Next we built a monorail with a queue line long enough to hold all the guests that we can get that I have prepared in advance. Once again this is built with just a single click. This is followed by a burger stall so that we can now run all advertisements for 12 weeks. Less than a second of in-game time has passed and we already have a ride, a burger stall and our advertisements running. To prevent the incoming guests from leaving in case they cannot join the queue for the monorail immediately, it is a good idea to build some no entry signs in front of the park entrances. With that done, it's time to prepare for the awards. You can get an award at the start of every month, so we need to make sure that we qualify for as many as possible before the end of March. First, we built 10 Gentle Rides for the Best Gentle Rides Award. Because there is so much to build, we're still using the pausing method. Next up are 6 Log Flumes for the Water Rides Award. We're also gonna paint their main tracks bright purple so that they qualify for the most dazzling color scheme award as well. After that, it's time for 6 custom built roller coasters, which makes sure that we qualify for both the best coasters award and the best custom built rides award. For the latter, the rides need to have an excitement rating of at least 5.5, which this launched looping coaster design with 6 laps will achieve. Note that because of the pausing strategy, it is still only the 1st of March, even though we have already built 18 rides and a stall. After having built 5 more of these with their main tracks all colored bright purple, it is time to prepare for the awards for best food and best toilets. For best food you need at least 7 food stalls, 4 unique ones, more than 1 per 128 guests and less than 12 hungry guests. For best toilets you need at least 4 of them and at least 1 per 128 guests and less than 16 guests needing to pee. I built 20 food stalls and 20 toilets which is enough for now. 
There is also an award for best staff, which requires you to have at least one of every staff type, at least 20 staff and at least one staff member per 32 guests. I went with 10 handymen, 5 mechanics and security guards and a lot of entertainers. These entertainers will also make sure that we get the park rating up to 850 as quickly as possible. This is important because the natural guest generation depends on the park rating and it maxes out at the rating of 850. And that's it for the award preparation, so now it's time to start building the queue line TV so that the guests in the queue line don't become unhappy. While I'm doing this, let's have an overview of all the awards that we do and don't qualify for. The awards that we do qualify for are Best Gentle Rides, Water Rides, Coasters, Custom Rides, Food, Toilets and Staff, Most Dazzling Color Scheme, Safest Park and Best Value Park. The last two are achieved by having no crashes and vandalism and by charging less than a quarter of the maximum for the park entry respectively. The awards we don't qualify for are Tidiest and Most Beautiful Park, Untidiest Park, Most Confusing Layout, Worst Value Park, Worst Food and Most Disappointing Park. The last five are all negative ones that penalize your guest generation so we don't want them anyway. The reason we cannot qualify for the awards for tidiest and most beautiful park is that those require guests to think the park is clean and pretty and they cannot think that while queuing for a ride. This thought limitation is also beneficial to us though. Guests will get very hungry while waiting in the queue line but since they cannot think about being hungry they don't count as hungry so we still qualify for the best food award. When about two thirds of the queue line is covered in TVs, March is coming to an end, so the time has come to see if we get lucky and get an award. And... nothing. The game randomly selects an award at the start of every month that you don't already have and unfortunately it has selected one we don't qualify for. Looks like we need to do it all over again and hope we're luckier next time. This might take a long time if we want to get an award at the start of every month. Unless it's random, right? So what if we just reload the save that I made a few days before the end of March and try again? Well, this doesn't work. Every time we try again we get no reward, so it seems that while it is somewhat random, the seed that will be used for the random number generator has already been determined at this point. However, at some point later on it will change. The award for the start of April will be the same every time when we reload on the 28th of March, but the one for August won't be. The question now is, is there a way we can force this seed to change before it's April? Yes, there is. After trying a few different things I found that building a coaster and testing or opening it will change the seed. With that knowledge let's try reloading the save, building two micro corkscrew coasters and see if we get an award this time. And yes, we just got the best toilets award. This little bit of RNG manipulation will allow us to guarantee an award at the start of every single month. In April we finish building the queue line TVs and put the mechanic next to the monorail in case it breaks down. After that it's micro corkscrew coaster time which we need for raising the soft guest cap. The monorail, crooked houses, log flumes and looping coasters only attract a combined 1240 guests. If we want more we will need to build more rides. Each of these corkscrew coasters attracts 100 guests so we need to build another 40 or so and will probably be fine. If they break down they no longer attract any guests so it's probably a good idea to build a few more than necessary and replace any broken down ones. At the end of April or rather the start of May we this time get the safest park award on the first attempt so no need to reload the park here. A quarter of the year has now passed and we have just over 1000 guests. Since we will only get more awards later this should be less than a quarter of the total number of guests at the end of the year. 
all of the basic work is now finished so all we have to do now is keep up with the requirements of the awards and the soft guest cap. This means building more micro corkscrews, more stalls and hiring more staff when necessary. All these micro corks are bright purple to make sure that we still qualify for the most dazzling color scheme award. By this time with 40 corkscrews built we can raise the entry price to 50 bucks to make some more money which we will need. This is still less than a quarter of the maximum as each coaster contributes about 7 bucks to that maximum and we have 40 coasters. At the start of June we are unlucky again so we reload, build 2 coasters and this time we get the best value park award. A week later the ads are about to run out so as soon as they do we pause, renew them and unpause again to minimize the time without ads. During the rest of the month we built our third row of 20 corkscrews for a total soft guest cap of more than 7000 which will be enough. The third row of food stalls and toilets makes us qualify for the best food and toilets award for up to 7680 guests which is much more than we will get. With the end of June coming near we are approaching the halfway point. With more than 2200 guests we are doing very well and the guest generation is still only increasing. First though we have to get our fourth award. The first time we are unlucky so we reload and build 2 coasters. Still no award so we reload again and build 4 coasters this time. It doesn't need to be a multiple of 2 by the way, I just did that because I liked it. The third time's a charm as this time we do get an award in the form of the best custom designed rights award. We now have 4 awards and this is the fastest guest generation I have ever seen. It's absolutely ridiculous how many guests are spawning. To break it down, the normal guest generation here is about 175 guests per month. The awards increase this by a factor of 2.44 to about 427 a month. The advertisements independently generate another 313 for a total of 740 guests per month or about 1.8 per second. With this guest generation rate you would beat Amity Airfield in only just over half a year. At the end of July we arrive at an interesting point. The best toilets award we got at the start of April will expire so we need to get another one in return for it. However even after retrying 6 times every time with a different amount of coasters built I didn't manage to get a new 4th award. I decided to let the game run on and check the code to see if my suspicions were true and they were. The code checks if you can receive another award before it removes the expired one. At the start of August we still have 4 awards so we cannot get another one as 4 is the maximum. Immediately after that the one from April expires so we are back to 3. This means that you cannot have 4 awards active simultaneously for more than 1 month in a row. As a result of that we will only have 3 awards active for the rest of this run. There is nothing to do in August as the park is pretty much finished so let's move on to the end of the month. This time the safest park award expires and we get the best roller coasters award in its place. We're 3 quarters of the way in now and we have about 3600 guests most of which have been queuing for the monorail for a very very long time. They just stand there like zombies entertained by television and the occasional furry walking by. Halfway September the ads expire again so we need to renew them for a third and final time. Two weeks later we need to get our final award to replace the best value park award which took one reload to happen and it's the best staff award. At this time it also begins to rain and I am really thankful that the monorail is a covered ride otherwise this would have ruined the entire run. In the last month I removed and replaced all the broken micro corkscrew coasters and finished the 4th row. Not because we need it but because it looks nice. And there we are, it is the end of October year 1 and we have almost 5000 guests. The guest graph in the top left is the steepest without cheats that I have ever seen. The exact guest count at the end of the year is... 
4905, which is more than you need to beat any scenario in the entire game. I was actually hoping for more than 5000, but the fact that you cannot get 4 awards for more than 1 month in a row prevented that. I really like the absurdity of this park. To get the most guests possible you need one tiny monorail that never goes with a massive queue line filled with TVs, 10 unreachable flat rides, 6 unreachable water rides and custom built coasters and a ton of unreachable stalls, toilets and extra rides. It's ridiculously unrealistic but it works. If you want to see that time where I went in the complete other direction and got guests in about the slowest way possible you can click here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.